So currently I'm just going to show you how to mount your uh, your appetites for um, for EDM analysis. So the first thing you do is get one of these uh, lovely little epoxy melt molds. Uh, they're made out of rubber. Uh, you'll see that you'll see that some of the molds might be a little white. That means they're pretty worn out, and we want to avoid them. Um, we typically usually make a new mount when things get worn out. Uh, there is epoxy, and uh, there's epoxy in a mold, and these things live just up up here in this corner cabinet, just here. So what we're going to do is what we need to set up is we usually just need a microscope, a little optical microscope to check our, how our samples look. Um, we've got a little pair of tweezers, um, several pairs of tweezers. These are mostly to hold down the paper, they don't actually uh, perform any functions. They mostly just make sure that we cover the various mounds while we pour one in. And we also want a little little thick bristled uh, paintbrush like this one here where uh, it's, it's got nice a lot of thick little bristles so the appetite grains can't get, uh, can't get stuck to it. So what we do is we have our little separate here and then what we do is we get some tissue paper or we get some Kim White, we fold them into uh, nice big squares and we basically use it to cover the uh, we use it to cover the mold so we can avoid any contamination to other mounts when we're pouring it in. So as you can see now, we've got all of these tissue all this Kim White down and we're only exposing one uh, one space for us to pour our sample in. And that's what we can use these uh, tweezers to weigh that down so it doesn't blow around in the vacuum. And then all we do is we take our separate of appetite and then we unfurl it and what you want to do is gently pour it out into that into that little area. So, And you want to make sure you don't pour it too steeply so they pile in one area. You want to kind of gently tap it so they spread out and then we can use the, the paintbrush to separate any, any lumps or chunks. Because uh, once this appetite stack on top of each other or maybe these little piles, they're actually really hard to count. So you just tap, just tapping this little paper and feeding these in. And I want to give a good distribution fairly evenly across the whole little mount. Don't worry about going too close to the, uh, the side. Uh, the sides are typically going to, they're not going to usually get covered by the, um, by the mica. So it's more important to try and get stuff in the middle. And then when you're done, you just turn away so you don't spill anything. You can fold that back up. And what you'll find is you'll have a nice little amount of appetite. Whoops. Appetite. You can start to see them, and then if, you, if you're sort of concerned about them at all, and you want to look at how it's done, you can just check in the microscope. Perfect, lots of beautiful little uh, appetites. So then if you want to move on to the next one, so I'm going to do this one again because, uh, because it's a detrital sample and I want to make two mounts. I can simply just pour, pull over the, the bit of Kim White, exposing a new, a new gap, a new mount, and then I want to make sure that I'm just covering up that, that old one. I'm just going to use a, use a small piece of, uh, a smaller Kim White to cover that. And then again, the same thing, I'm going to just do the same thing again going to open this, unfurl this little package, hold it nice and close to the mount, and just tap. Tap in those appetite grains. And 
and quick carefully pull away. And then if you if you have them really well, if they're pretty clumped like these ones are, you can use that paintbrush and just gently, gently kind of just spread them out so there's a bit more of an even distribution. And when you're done with that, you can just clean it with a bit of ethanol and a Kimwa. That should be good clean to use for the next one. Now something I've forgotten is we need to also have a map of this uh, of this mount. So this is a little uh, hand drawn map of the uh, of the mount. So we've got our X in the top right corner to denominate where we are. And then the most important thing when we're doing our sample prep is label, label, label. So we've got 03A for our first sample. And I'm just going to put 03A2 in the second column. Now, assuming that you have uh, that the epoxy has set well, and we know that the epoxy has set well because we should have left our little popsicle stick in the epoxy, you can see that it is like quite clearly set in there. Um, it's nice and firm. You poke it with this little poking stick. You know, it doesn't move at all. Rock solid. So what you do is you take your little uh, pointing stick and you take that beautiful map that you should have drawn of your samples and simply all you do is look for the sample and then let it correspond to the mount that you've made and just scratch that name into the back so uh, this is 29A21A and you want to be nice and firm with the scratches there's going to be a lot of holes and you're going to want to make sure that it's really clear because the most important thing is labeling with sample preparation. So 21A, 21A. And if you can't fit it all in one line, make sure you do it. And you want to stay away from the margins because you're, going to, you're actually going to bevel those down later on. And you can see nice and clearly, hopefully, that it is the sample name is etched in to that one and you repeat that for the remaining samples and then when they're all done you can then remove them from the mount. Once we have done with our samples we've mounted them in epoxy and they're nicely labeled at the back we can uh, begin uh, the sort of polishing process and the first thing we do to polish them is we, we grind them down using grit paper at a 2,500 uh, 2, grit and we grind it down to expose the internal section of the appetite. So the setup we've got here is we've got our, we've got our little pucks here, our little mounts and they're all sitting in here. Then we have uh, one of these pizza boards that, uh, that Stuart sets up. This one is for, um, this one's for Zircon and we're just going to use it as a, as a basis to sort of like not, a, not sort of spread water everywhere so we're, we're happy to put the grit paper on that and then here we've got a little bit of um, Kim White to clean off the sample with some, with some ethanol and then we've got our sample, we've got our um, microscope to check the sample so the polishing equipment is usually stored here so in here we have the grit paper we have then after the grit paper we take it to nine micron grit which is this blue blue paper here lapping film and then finally we go to uh, 0.3 micron aluminium polish and with a with a sort of much finer uh, polishing board but the first thing we do we do all the samples to one step and then we then we sort of finish that and we're happy with how everything's exposed we then move everything to the next step so we do this step by step incrementally with all samples at a time so the first thing you do is it's pretty straightforward you take your you take your sample you 
put a bit of water on your uh, on your grit paper, like such, just a just a droplet, and then you make sure you're uh, make sure you're polishing the side with the um, with the appetites. If you uh, you don't know, you can check under the microscope, but it hopefully should be the opposite side to what you're what you're waiting. And all you do is just push it down firmly. You just do either little circles or hopefully figures of eight. That should grit the uh, should expose the the appetites for their internal sections, and this is this is probably where you want to do most of the uh, the grinding. And then, if you want to check the sample. You uh, clean it with a bit of ethanol first, and you check it under the microscope. And another way to another way to check is to, to sort of reflect the light back to you, um, and you should be able to see that the surface is pretty scratched up. And if it's sufficiently scratched up, you can. Um, if it's sufficiently scratched up, then you, you should be able to move on to the next step. And I'm just going to give this another grind, just a little more. Again, check under the microscope. Yep, that looks good. And then we're going to put it in the ultrasonic bath. So the ultrasonic bath is set up at the back. You put some water in the tub and a beaker in there. And you place this in the beaker and just turn it on. And just clears out any any crud or any uh, polish, and that should be good. You repeat that for all of the samples to expose their internal section before you move on to the next stage. All right. So once we've uh, once we've done the the 2,500 grit polish and exposed the internal section of the appetite, we're now going to remove some of those larger scratches with the nine micron lapping film. So. It, it should be this this blue paper that's in that drawer. Um, the back is is sort of shiny, so we want to use that coarse side, and we can just place it in that uh, that pizza dish again. It's a similar setup as for the grinding. We've got the uh, the ethanol and the and the um, kimolite, and then we've got our microscope to check our polar. So we should have taken this sample out of the um, the vibra, the um, the ultrasonic cleaner. And then it should be cleaned in ethanol. And so we want to get rid of any particulate matter because if you get anything coarse on this lapping film, it's going to start putting big scratches onto our, uh, onto our mounts. And again, we want to make sure, like with every step with appetite fishing track, we want to make sure that we do each step as high quality as we can. And so it makes our like next step much easier. So the trick with this one, uh, this is actually should be like quite a brief step. And the trick with this one is to be very spartan on the water. So even that, even this amount that I've added here is, is, is too much. You kind of want to have even less water than that. So very, very little water and you want to just basically, again, little, little figures of eight or little circles, figures of eight are better. And as the water dries, that's good. That'll make sure that you get a really nice focused polish and you'll start to see that the there might be imprints of the pizza board will come onto the, the lapping film and that just means that you're uh, you're actually polishing it. after that when you're done just give it another clean and then check that polish under the uh, the microscope
hey this one's done a really good job we've exposed the grains it shouldn't really take that long basically just uh, when you're finished you uh, just plop it in there and then switch it on and then once that's done you're ready for the fine polish okay so hopefully you now have a really nicely um, exposed uh, set of appetite mount and you use the uh, nine micron um, lapping film to sort of just get rid of those big scratches. And, and now we're really on to the, the really important step, the, probably the most important step of um, appetite fish and track analysis, and that's, and that's the polishing. And so this is gonna be the part where we're gonna take the most time. We should be sort of taking about five, five minutes per sample um, minimum. You can always go more. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, well, 0.3 micron uh, alumina polish. So we're not really going to be removing much material with this step. We're just simply getting rid of all of those really fine scratches and, and getting a nice, a nice uh, appetite surface to etch. Because once we etch it, or any sort of scratch that's on those grains is going to be magnified, and it's going to make our job of counting a lot more difficult. So this is sort of like the key step. So what we do is we take our, again, sorry, the nine micron polish, it lives, lives up here. Um, there's like a big tub of it at the back. And then, um, and then there should be sort of like a smaller tub for, for easy access. So what you do is you get this, uh, you get the, the second kind of pizza dish. There should be this, um, basically it has a microfiber cloth on it. You can reuse this several times. So like this is, there should be one already there. It lives down in the, in the pizza, pizza box or the pizza dish area. Should be nice and clean and dry from the last person who used it. And all we do is we take our micron polish and we just spread a little bit of this, uh, this aluminum powder over the pizza dish, over the micron cloth. And you don't want to, whoa, well, that's a bit chunky. And so, you know, you'll start off with a bit and then you can always add more as you go because um, you will be sort of here doing this for a while. And then all you do is take the water and then just sort of drizzle it over the, uh, over the micron powder. And you'll, you can add sort of more water. You want this to be fairly well lubricated. So, you know, if it starts drying out, add some more water. You know, don't, don't be too, uh, unlike the lapping film, you can afford to be a little bit more uh, liberal with the amount of water you use. And then all you do is basically take your little mount and then move it around the, move it around the, the uh, polishing cloth and then uh, basically do this for five minutes. I think a really good, uh, a good protocol here is to actually do this for one minute and then um, and then rotate it by 90 degrees and then do it again for another minute and then rotate it again for another 90 degrees. You keep moving, you're sort of rotating how you're polishing the sample as you're polishing it. So let's say I've been polishing this for about, you know, imagine that a, a minute has gone past even though it has not. We would take the little mount and then we would rotate it and then keep polishing. And again, you want to be doing this for a, a, a minimum of, of five minutes. Um, you can go sort of as long as you want really at this step, but uh, we want sort of five minutes to get them really nice and, uh, nice and well, well polished.